Now, in order to get a really good feel for this bags problem, I want to return to the picture we had drawn before, and I want to see if we can push this to move on to the next day. And I'm hoping that in doing so, and in adding some things of note to the diagram, we'll be able to start noticing some patterns in order to generate higher levels of this problem without a visual aid. So the first thing that I'm going to do, although the colors were very useful, for helping us keep track of what bag was what in the start, I'd like to eliminate the colors from the picture because when the colors are gone, you notice that there are a lot of different cases that can be condensed into fewer cases. So for example, with all the colors gone, those three different cases that I had here can be condensed into one case. And in order to serve as a reminder of the fact that there are actually three cases there, I'll just put a weight on the edge of the graph. And I'm going to write it as a binomial coefficient to help us keep track of some patterns that we should expect to see. So in doing this, I've now condensed from five cases into just three cases right here. This will help me when I move on to the next day. So I'm going to keep those binomial coefficients in the picture. Over here, where I have these four different bags, there are a lot of different choices. Remember that I have to pick an even number of them, so I could choose zero of them to put inside my current bag, two of them to put inside my current bag, or all four of them to be put inside my current bag. Over here in this example where I had two bags, again, I'll be left with two choices. Do I choose zero bags to put inside my current bag, or do I choose both of them? to go inside the current bag, and again over here. And so you can see that with these binomial coefficients, we have a nice pattern going. Four choose zero, four choose two, four choose four. Two choose zero, two choose two, two choose zero, two choose two, going up by twos. And what's more is that if we go back to every branch now that we have in our tree and we label them, some patterns start to become more clear to us as we're thinking about what the answer is for the number of arrangements of bags on a given day. In particular, for the first four days, we have a really nice pattern going in terms of what f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, and f of 4 are equal to in terms of binomial coefficients. The problem that we see is that that pattern that holds for f of 1 through f of 4 does not quite hold for f of 5, but something similar to it will. So for us to understand what's really going on with f of 5, I'd like us to return to the picture. So notice that we kept these three cases separate over here, and we had visually one line going down from here to here and here to here, leading us to think perhaps what I need is a coefficient of 2, in front of these 2 choose 0 plus 2 choose 2 terms. But in fact, what I'm going to need in front of the 2 choose 0 and 2 choose 2 terms is the sum of the weights that are on the edges of this graph at the previous level. And that pattern will hold all the way across the board. Alternatively, I could have condensed further on my initial diagram, and since all that was really important to me was how many bags were in were available on the shelf at the previous stage, I could have condensed my diagram right here to talk about the total number of paths we have leading in here, and it would have been a little bit more clear what that coefficient is. So rather than simply summing the 4 choose 0, 4 choose 2, 4 choose 4, with the 2 choose 2 and the 2 choose 0, I need coefficients on those sums. And what the coefficients are, are the number of paths we have leading into any picture that has this many bags at the previous stage. And what's even better about this particular way of counting things is that something more is going on here. In particular, if I look at these coefficients, Every arrangement of bags that I have at stage five had to have come from some collection of bags at stage four. And so when I take the coefficients that I have in the terms that I need for figuring out what f of five ought to be equal to, the coefficients in this sum 
really need to give me f of 4 because every single term that leads to a configuration with either two bags or four bags had to have come about from an arrangement that yielded four bags in the first place. So we have something really interesting going on here, and it's something we'll explore just a little bit further in the next video.